Right. Welcome to the Rift. SNC taking on GSCC. SNC will be the blue team to the left of your screen. GSCC will be the right team. Uh, the red team to the right of your screen, rather. Uh, as the champions enter the Rift. You've got me all mixed up now, Pete. My left and my right's. Well, your left is your left and your right is your right. Oh, that helps. Yeah. That's that clear. Your right is right and your left is wrong. Uh, this is the second game of the day. Wise words. <laughs> <laughs> for PLE Computers, Corsair and Streamline. As we watch these two teams move into the jungle, a little bit of spread coming out of GSCC. And uh, the blue team picking to, uh, to, to group up, which didn't work well for uh, Tramby College in the first game. It didn't, know. And, and Pete, I'm assuming that you, you know you're barracking a little bit for St. Norbert's, aren't you? Look, I'm I I'm unbiased because I'm casting, but deep down, it's deep deep little, down, it's where you come from. It's where I come from. It, uh, it's St. Norbert's is my alum. So I'd look, I'd love to see them get the win. Uh, if I'm being a little bit selfish, but you know what? I all at the, at the end of the day, all I want is a good match, guys. That's what I want. <laughs> Just want to see a good match. Uh, we had an absolute beauty, speaking of good matches, um, the first match of last weekend went for 51 minutes. It was an absolute ripper to watch. Never so again. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. And that wasn't even the pauses. Uh, so uh, you'll be able to see that uh, on the Twitch channel, which you're watching right now. But don't go there just yet, um, because you've got to see this. This is going to be an absolute ripper. And your fingers crossed, anyway. Uh, well, you can already see the synergy on that bot lane. Look at that. <laughs> Been able to spam the dance together. That's that's a sign of good coordination. It's and a great teamwork, thing. and a lot of lot of spamming going on around the map just in general. Um, you know, Pins enemies everywhere. enemies missing uh, for the red team, which is pretty straight up because the blue team's sitting in their own side. Uh, as we go into mid lane here, yeah, both junglers starting uh, their bottom side. Uh, Zach with his red, and with his blue. Uh, Zach. Doesn't actually have mana, so he doesn't need his blue to start off with. So it is uh, pretty good for him. Uh, Hecarim is going for his, uh, his Grump as well. So he, he probably won't be going for that level 2 gank. Uh, Greg, uh, Zach is probably going to go for an early gank stop, I imagine. He's going to try to start snowballing this uh, Nasus uh, to sort of attempt this. But I was saying before this game started, there's a, there's too much AD on the, on the this SNC side. So all GSCC have to do is they can get if they get a little lead, they just start stacking armor onto this Kench, onto this Shen, onto this Hecarim even, and suddenly there's not a lot of damage coming out. And the fly in from Sage Clown trying to do a little bit of damage on Ren Fox, but these two in the top lane just trading blows, and same with the bottom lane at the moment, fairly even amongst both. Just yes. antagonizing at the moment. Yeah, so the both bot lanes are hit, uh, hit two pretty evenly, so that neither of them sort of were able to sort of get any advantage of that in level 2, but we can see Shen just uh, using his taunt almost in cooldown, but it hit, this and is looking for a gank. gank we were talking about. Turtle Master coming in after Sage Cloud manages to flash away, and there's the he has fly. No flash to get away. The drop, and it might be first kill. The shield and the, uh, the auto attack block was enough to sort of protect him there. Lucky, lucky to get away from that one. He used his uh, flash a bit early there. He should have waited for Zach starting to, to start uh, after using his E to dodge that initial knockup, and that would have been a lot cleaner for him. But uh, at the end, of, like, end of it all, he still lives, so it doesn't really matter. But he's still top, and Zach's just going to come right around. But this time, Hecarim's top side. If they're not careful, Hecarim's just going to come over and we could We could see another gank here from top side. In fact, very much so. Sage doesn't work hard to get this one. Sage Clown oh. is just the managing flash. to... Oh. First blood there to Zach. And uh, if they're just going to run into Hecarim, Hecarim should just be fine and just run it out. Meanwhile, bot lane can't knock enough the, uh, the arm. Can't force to use uh, Black Shield. Uh, Grey Shield, sorry. And uh, able yeah, to get away from that. Bit of action nice and early in this game. Four minutes into it. One kill to SNC. Not already used on this Echo, and that's... That's a big summoner down. Not a lot of reason, really. But here comes Zach. Zach's just all over the map right now, just ganking everywhere. He just uh, did his gank mid, and Hecarim just yet to do sort of anything useful. But this is the this is the interesting thing about you mentioned you know SNC being a full team of AD uh, as Hexa goes in for Bowler can't quite complete the kill, and they manage to avoid that. But this is the interesting thing: the the attack damage team say Norbert College you're saying you know as long as GSCC gets their their uh, armor up but I mean if 
SNC manages to use that attack damage wisely, nice and early in the game, they could be ahead quite quickly. Yeah, they, they do have to buy these armor pants items, so like, they don't just magically appear in your, in your inventory. So they do have to get the gold for it, and if they can stay ahead, uh, if Blue Team can stay ahead in damage, Turtle Master. Damage compared to their armor, like, they should be able to just take away the game. Like, they do have to finish early, but if they, they delay the game at all, uh, and they'll red side to uh, start stacking that armor, it is going to be a rough one for them. Catac and Bowler here just escorting their minions, but still playing it safe, playing it nice and close to the turret. Catac using this grass pretty wisely. But he, he'd have been seen getting in there. Uh, Hecarim is, is, is defending mid, so they know that there's no jungle pressure coming from Hecarim uh, towards this bot side because they can uh, have vision of him. Uh, so they can sort of zone uh, Jinx and the, uh, the Tarm Kench out like this by just simply having their presence and the threat of the knock-up and uh, the feathers coming out from the Zaya Rakan bot lane. Uh, so they can do that, but they now no longer have uh, Hecarim. You can see that wave coming along as well. They're really just sort of, they're no longer playing as uh, far ahead as they were. So that's a, a good math awareness uh, from this Hexer and Tabita bot lane. Uh, Air Drake is uh, the first Drake that is available. So that would be very good to have on a Hecarim to increase his... Uh, Damage a little bit from the movement speed. Uh, top lane is just going to be another sort of tank fight until this uh, NASA is able to get some stacks on this Q to really do meaningful damage. But here comes Hecarim for his first game. Here we go, three v two. Nice knockout. Tries to get in there, and they're holding their own. Yeah, yeah that was a good jump from Jinx though. He's going to pull back under the turret, I think. No, Zach's here no, though, he's coming in. Side. Zach's coming in. He's going to get a nice E off. And onto two people, that was huge. Great E off and takes out Bowler. Katak's going to be the next one to go down. Oh. And Sir Eichelitz, it's a three, three kill there. And SNC all of a sudden is up 2,000 gold and four kills. That was a great uh, call there from Zach to be on that bot side of the map. He saw the Hecarim coming. He was able to match him very quickly. And that Rakan really was able to delay that. They got gank enough with the, his two-man knock onto the Hecarim and the Kench. And it really was the saving play there. But the Zack is putting in work yeah, at the moment. Zack's everywhere right now. That's just uh, the, the power of his E. His E has such a massive range uh, to be able to sort of gank from anywhere and be available to at any moment. And there we go. Uh, blue team, as if to add insult to injury, taking that advantage of bot lane and just absolutely dominating and getting the first tier turret and the gold that comes with it. Uh, yeah, so I didn't actually see if they uh, gave all that gold to to Desire, uh, because the the first blood gold turret, uh, turret gold, uh, like it's a like a local thing, so you, you get the, obviously uh, the hundred uh, global gold, but there's also the extra five hundred gold uh, locally. So if you're in turret range, you can uh, sort of divvy up to who gets the gold. So if uh, Rakan was to leave, all that gold would go to. Zaya, or if there's two people in it, it just splits between the two. Where would you want the gold to go? To your ADC 100% of the time. Or wh whoever's your carry. Sage Clown, possibly with an opportunity here against Red Fox, but decides not to take him, not to chase. No, he, he used everything to half health him, and it's just, he, he doesn't have to follow any follow up damage without his cooldown, so, and he's just going to heal it up, like you can see. Uh, Nasus gets lifesteal off his passive, um, so he can just, he, and he gets it off his Q2, so his Q's in there. Heal them up, and it's just a lot of tankiness in top lane. I think both junglers know that where they are, where each other are, rather. And they might have just been the red side seeing the Zack, so they don't know where Hefrim is, so they have to be careful of this. Because he could appear in this middle lane or this top lane. Really spread out amongst both teams now. But that Zack has been the one that has impressed me so far. Yeah, he's, he's had a lot of early presence. Uh, he could have done with Lee Sin as well. That's something Lee Sin does, but just like twice as good as Zack can. And it looks like Zack's going to go in for a gank here. The flash used already. He managed to Lands get in nice and far. And he has red buff, so he's going to be constantly uh, slowed. And there was the, the Zack ult. That Sage we pulled back. back. Not a chance for Sage Clan to get out of that one. And Zack is on a killing spree. And Turtle Master was able to, uh, to pick up the kill there, so he's now a 3 0 Zack. This is a huge lead, nice and early in the game, as Vermillion chased down Akrid. Got to be careful of the turret Nothing here, it manages it. to get him. And now... No, it doesn't manage to get the kill there. And Jinx able to pick up the kill, that's a nice pick up there for Jinx. Much needed kill for her. But I'm not sure why Zed death marked that. I'm not... 
I think the Unite would have killed him. If he if he was able to get another order off, that would have secured it. Finally, though, uh, GSCC has their first kill of the game. It's 6-1, but such an amazing gold lead to SNC. 4,000, 4,500 gold ahead. Not even 10, just 10 minutes in now. And Sage Clown uh, manages to stop Red Fox from going back to his Nexus, teleporting back, but he's going to get the opportunity to do so here. And we're back to bot lane. Yeah, Red so just collecting minions. They just want to stall this game out now. Uh, you got the kill on to the right person, you got it onto the Jinx. So that's 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 really good for them. So if they can stall it out and start getting these armor items, Shen can become massive. Uh, he is getting a, a bit of a... He's getting targeted quite a lot top lane. So they do have to be careful of that. But meanwhile, the River, a bit of hope coming out into this Hecker and not leading too much. Red team trying to get rid of that uh, vision ward, but not having the opportunity. So you can see now they have uh, blue side now have uh, blue uh, like control in that river, so uh, it should be a pretty safe dragon for them, if, unless Hecker uh, is going to come in and try and steal. That, this is the Shen CP. I didn't get about defend. it. Nice three man knock up by the Rakan. The continuous knock up from the Zac. The big Zac ult in towards the uh, Zed. Zed's doing what he can. Jinx doing so much damage off the side with the rocket. Hecker is going to fall to the Zac. Zach's now running down, down this Jinx. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, Shen's running away with, with the, uh, with the Shen. Oh, Nasus is running away with the Shen. Sorry, and he's going to pick up that kill. That is an ace, first ace of the match. That was a five-one trade in that last sixty seconds of play. So that was very well played there for, uh, for the blue side. Um, red side probably shouldn't have walked into that um, as much as they did. They got three man knocked up by the Rakan. They got the knockback from the, uh, from the. Oh, the knock-up, sorry, from the Zaki, and that was all four of them then, so th they were knocked up for at least two seconds there, and that's two seconds of damage on four members. So that's a lot of damage that, that they just missed out on, and then they were able to follow that with the, the Zach ult that, that took two members, and they were really just able to clean up that fight. Jinx do it, did what she can. The rocks off to the side were doing work, but it just wasn't enough. SNC now, uh, chasing the Herald. They're going to get it unless Kadak can somehow manage to get the steal, which would be handy for them to have because you'd think he's missed it. Blue team takes the Rift Herald, and this has got to be another turret down. Yeah, so this should be mid turret fallen fairly soon. They just got, got it back. They have, probably have a lot of gold on them that they need to spend. So if they can just group up mid, this should be a pretty safe turret for them to get with this Herald. And uh, with Shen off the side, he no longer has TP, he no longer has uh, his ult. To TP into a fight, so he has to be very careful uh, about where he positions himself on the map because he's going to be pretty useless otherwise. We're talking about almost a 6,500 gold lead at the moment for St. Norbert's. Yeah, so it's, it is a pretty uh, big lead for them. You can see a lot of that's onto the, the Zaya too. That's certainly not what you want. Uh, Zaya ahead is a pretty terrifying thing. You can summer. see the dive here onto the Jinx. Nice pickup onto, uh, by the Zach to pick up that Jinx. And meanwhile, Hecarim is forced to run away. Zed going in here with Deathmark. Should be able to pick up a kill on the Hecarim. And he should be able to just jump away there. Just too powerful now. The the, the St. Albert College just look incredibly powerful. See, see Echo's trying to do what he can, split pushing. He knows that there's not much he can do in this mid lane. That was a great play by the Zac uh, to get him behind and actually peel them away from that first tier turret as well. Because initially that's what they were coming in to do. They were coming in to defend that turret. Then all of a sudden they've got Zac to deal with. And the Rift Herald can go in and do its work. And, and now, now... We're going to see a very quick game here today. They're going to be taking away this get first gate. There it is. Three turrets in a matter of two and a half minutes. And it could be an inhibitor down here as well. Yeah, 14 minute inhibitor would be pretty huge. Uh, you, you now have this mid lane that's going to be constantly pushing. And there's not a lot of damage coming out from this red side. So it goes. They do have to be careful with now with this mid lane open. That that go on. No, it's a like GSCC now. They're gonna they're gonna be panicking. They're they're gonna be coming back. Um, they're gonna have so much pressure on that middle lane. And and what are they gonna do now? Uh, they, they, it's, they have, it's gonna be hard. They've lost a lot early on. Like they needed to just go even early, get some uh, get some armor items. But this Zach just had none of it. He was able to sort of just pressure them everywhere on the map. He was everywhere he needed to be. He's able to get those like, NASA's ahead top lane, which frees him up to do stuff elsewhere. And you saw that uh, the, the real big one was the, the fight in bot lane where he kind of uh, ganks the, the Hecarim and was able to pick up the three, uh, pick up that three kills uh, for the for that bot lane. This Zach earning MVP very early on. It's been his work right around the map uh, that has gotten this team SNC so far ahead.
But, I mean, the, that was an incredible play. Just going back to that Rift Herald, that's probably one of the best trades for a Rift Herald that I've seen to be able to hold it up enough and support it enough for it to bring down three turrets through mid lane. Yeah, it, it was a pretty impressive. But that, that just goes to show how far ahead uh, Red Side, uh, no, Blue Side is, sorry. It was a massive push all the way through. They didn't slow down. They didn't stop. Nothing was going to get in their way, and they pushed right through to get the Inhibitor so early. So you see them now in. pressuring this uh, bot lane turret. Abyssal Voyage taking the Kench and the Echo behind the Zarya, but you can see how much damage the Zarya is doing, able to kite backwards with a roll. And now Echo's in a, a, bit of, uh, a bit of trouble. Master taking down Acrid. And Nathan, do you, do you see any way no. here that... That's, um, that question is no. They're, 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 they're <laughs> not going to pull back, is there? There's not a isn't. chance. Uh, they're just too far ahead now. Red yep. Fox now diving and gets the kill. The, the window of sort of delaying the game is completely gone now. Uh, they, they're just going to stay ahead. The only way they can do this is if they stall the game for 20 minutes. And do you see that happening? Do you see the game stalling for 20 minutes? Not a chance. Yeah. Uh, this will be the second inhibitor down for the red team. So now they could go back, they could group up mid and then just continue pushing. Or they can just, which which they probably could do. Or you can just go for the real safe uh, bet. Group top, push that turret. They have two ways pushing in mid and bot lane that's just put so much pressure on this red side to deal with. And meanwhile, top lane is just going to be continuously getting pushed by the five members, and that could be a third inhib. And when you get third inhib, you get the double uh, super minions, all these waves, and then that, that would just be game over. Well, that's if the minions even make it up to the top in time. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen before the end of the match. Uh, Dragon is up in uh, about 20 seconds. They are trying to look for something top. But really, what difference is that going to make? Stops the warp back to Nexus. So I collect trying to take Vermillion, who manages to flash out. Hunt Red Fox now being pushed away. Jinx is in a really odd position there. She really shouldn't be there. I'm not sure why she was there. Used the, the plant to get over the wall, but bring the members with her. And that was a nice two man hold by the Zach coming towards Nasus. Nasus over, and now they're just running down towards this Jinx. Do, doing quite a lot of damage. Zach's just going to dive in onto the two members. They're doing what he can. Bit of a waste of death mark onto that Hecker. But he is forced out now, but he is still doing a lot of damage off the side. Zach able to pick up that double kill. And uh, now the only one person left is this Kench, and they are just going to back this in his heart. Kench will go down in just a matter of moments. Bench to Kench. And following that, so will that uh, second tier turret. And the uh, Zach's in the base, just forcing this Echo to sort of stay back a little bit, um, and not even try to be able to defend. This inhibitor turret will be the next thing to go down quite easily, and then you think it'll be inhibitor and super minions. And you have two waves of uh, super minions coming into their base now. They're just wiping up all the waves of uh, enemy minions, and they're going to be, be crashed onto that Nexus turret. That's it. Look, looking at that map, see those minions just come rolling in. Yeah. So that's a big issue that you have to deal with once those turrets around... Uh, nice knockout from the Rakan, though. Nice charm to follow up with that onto that Jinx. Jinx is going to fall. This is going to be uh, probably an ace here for, uh, for Blue Side. We're going to just end the game here. Quadra kill. First one we've seen of the match. Hands a kill, actually. Nicely Sorry. played there wow. from Fire. Oh, oh wow. And an ace. Hands a kill and an ace. Why bother with the inhibitor? Only two members died from SNC. Your mid laner and your, your support. This has been a dominant display Under from 20 minutes. St. Norbert College. 18 minutes yeah. and 17 seconds. 25 kills to two. It is victory to SNC. Wow. How about that game, boys? That was a very dominating win uh, from, from SNC. Able to just get that early lead. and just, They couldn't they build armor rolled. against it. And they just, yeah, they took that lead. Zach played extremely well there. Able to get his uh, lanes just going and... Yeah. SNC, you feel like they, they knew what they were about. I mean, you mentioned when they had the picks, the Nasus, the Zac, the Zed, the Zaya, the Rakan, all ADs uh, may have found it difficult late into the game or even mid into the game against your Kench, your Shin, your Jinx, your Hecarim, your Echo, who can all really build up their, uh, their armors. And not a problem for them in the end. Just managed to cut them down nice and early. It just feels like SNC knew what they were doing going into they this match. They do have to be careful uh, running comp like that, uh, like against better teams like uh, uh, Shenton, uh, uh, with PVA and players like that. Like They'd really be able to capitalize on the fact that you're all ID. They would build armor. They wouldn't lose mechanically in lane mm -hmm. uh, as easily as this uh, GNC team. And if they can get, um, sort of delay that early lead, uh, then they can just build armor and you sort of counter it that way and uh, you wouldn't be able to run this comp against everyone. 
Only uh, for SNC, only Vermillion and Hexa going down one apiece. Those are the two kills that uh, GSCC managed to get. But look at those scores across the board for SNC. In particular, Turtle Master with the Zac. Five kills across the map, but doing so much great work. And he was really the one that set up the entire match early on for SNC. He was really great around the map. But that Penta kill just rocketed Tobito up to 11 kills, just absolutely dominating in that last play. Yeah, that last um, play from uh, Zaya was really well played. He was able to get his feathers out, and he was able to pull them all back. And there like so many members, because they're all grouped up. There was nice stuns th for him to follow up on. And just to point out, Zach, he has 21 out of 25 kill participation. That's insane. And uh, you can see Rakan with a similar number, 19. And it's just well played from from everyone on that team. The CS scores as well, they tell a pretty big story considering that uh, there's not one from GSCC that managed to get over 75, 80 CS. Yeah, no one earned more than five grand in that game. And just to put in this perspective, that person with the most gold on that team was with uh, 4.9K from the Echo the lowest on the blue side was 6.9. That yeah. was 2K. But that's from the support as well. So that was a massive lead there for uh, for blue side. Unreal. It was a real dominant display here. That was game two. St. Norbert Cannons, uh, the blue side, defeating uh, very dominantly uh, the red side, GSCC in League of Legends. Game two for week four of the Flak Test Gaming 2017 Interschool Esports Championship. What does that say? What are you, what are you pointing at there on the Zach screen? Carrier, <laughs> <SNCs. laughs> Zach Carey, SNCS. Zach Carey, SNCS. Uh, for PLE Computers, Corsair, uh, Streamlineservers.com, and SciTech. Up next, uh, our 12 o'clock game will be kicking off soon. We're going to have a bit of a break. Uh, it was going to be a CSGO game with Nar Warren and Tramby College. That's had to be moved now. Instead, we're going to be bringing you another League of Legends game, Seton CC Bronze versus St. Norbert FOB. So it's a St. Norbert's Day today. Mm -hmm. You must be pretty happy about that. Pete. Hopefully it's a St. Norbert's Day in a few ways. Uh, but look, again, unbiased opinion. Oh, absolutely. Just want a really good match, guys. Right, but it's <laughs> nice to see. <laughs> That's all. Nice to see. So it'll be... The, the, really, the pressure's going to be on... Um, St. Norbert's FOB now. Can they can they follow up? Well, St. Norbert's FOB, in their first game of, of season 2017, they played a really good match. In fact, uh, a, a better match than what we actually thought of once we'd actually seen their picks for that match. And that was one of the real arm wrestle matches that we saw in this competition. So, uh, expecting good things from them, but also Seton CC Bronze, they're going to be coming up a pretty good team, uh, up against a pretty good team in Seton CC Bronze. So, back at midday with Seton CC Bronze, taking on St. Norbert FOB. This is the Flak Test Gaming Championship for Interschool Esports Season 